YouTube, how are you guys? Um, today I'm going to do a quick video answering some questions right after I do a quick rampage for YouTube. Um, I want to talk on some basic topics that I want to clear out with everyone who sees these videos and um, you know, leaves comments for me and stuff like that. First of all, I want to be very thankful to everyone who has given me all the positive feedback who has liked all my videos, who has been promoting my videos. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful comments and all the support. Thank you for the questions and all the video ideas that you guys have sent my way. Please send more and by all means, I will try and do as much as I possibly can. But please realize I do have a life and I like my life, so I do a lot of things all the time. Anyway, besides that, what I want to rampage about is, I want to bring up two main topics that I want to tell you guys about. The first topic is that this is my YouTube channel. So, with that being said, I will post here my opinions about things and I will post here what I've learned and whatever I like. I do not like to reveal certain secrets or in fact, I don't like to reveal any secrets. However, I do not feel like everything is secreted. This it's just a pot. This is made out of wood. This is not sacred. What's sacred is what's inside. So for those of you who have said something as to where are my elders, they're here in Miami. And where am, am I getting these ideas from? Or why am I doing these things? I'm doing it to be informative and to show people things. Okay? A pot is just simply a pot. The sobera, it has nothing sacred about it. What's sacred is what's inside and I don't reveal what's inside. I don't reveal ceremonies and I don't reveal anything. I reveal topics and things that people can know about that are basic knowledge that our religion, people need to just understand about our religion and that's the end of it. So that's my first rampage. The second rampage is I am local Miso, I am from Cuba, I am a Cuban, Afro-Cuban priest. I am not a traditionalist, traditionalist, uh, traditionalist Yoruba priest. What does that mean? That means that I practice Cuban Santeria. It's the same thing as traditional Yoruba, it just has a more Cuban flavor to it. You guys cannot come to my YouTube channel, watch my videos, and then post a comment about how you worship Olohum differently than me. Yes, we worship Olohum differently. I worship it in an Afro Cuban way, you in a traditional way. With that being said, you respect my way, and I respect your way. At the end of the day, we're both worshiping. Besides that, now we're on to the actual video. Um, so I want to talk to you guys about some questions that some of you have sent my way. The first question is what everyone always has to say. How much money does it cost to do this? How much money does it cost to do that? There is no set prices, people. It all depends on the house and it all depends on the body and all the, 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 the person who is doing the ceremony for you. People put prices on certain things that they should and people don't put prices on certain things that they should. Sometimes people give things for free, sometimes people don't want to give it for free. So ceremonies require a lot of money most of the time, like initiation ceremonies for example, because they take a lot of animals, they take a lot of materials, they take a lot of people, and they take a lot of food. Well that costs money. So there's no set pricing on anything. Like I'm saying, it always depends on like your godfather, your godmother, and whatever it is that I feel like charging. Uh, how do I start working with Onisha? Simple way, and the same way you will start with anything else. You can do an altar to the Onishas, you can do prayers, you can do offerings. Just always keep in mind the taboos that the Onisha has. If you're doing an altar for Obadala, for example, you would not put black candles or black things on Obadala's altar. Or you wouldn't put a bowl, which is Manteca Corojo, on Obadala because it's a taboo against Obadala. You wouldn't do those things. So for example, that's an example. However, if you're worshiping Obadala, you can most certainly do an altar and just do a little table with a white cloth and white candles and white flowers and and a picture of Obadala, you can just simply talk to Obadala there. You know, be creative, do research, and learn taboos. If you learn the taboos and you 
while it's a boost, you can certainly do your own little, you know, beginner's worship of Orisha. That does not mean that you are an Orisha priest or priestess. You only priest or priestess if you go into the Kali Osha ceremony and you're ordained as a priest or a priestess of the Orisha. I repeat that again. You can work with any Orisha spiritually, that does not make you a priestess or a priest of the Orisha. I hope that it's very clear. Another question is, does my background matter? And the answer is no. Your background does not matter. You can be any background. You can worship Orisha. Period. Now, this question has me going insane with the things that I have heard since I started doing YouTube videos. And this is why I left this question for last why I'm making a big emphasis on this question. The question is, how do I find out who my ruling Orisha is? There's three valid ways that I can tell you guys that I know of, that I've been taught, and that the Santeria community at large accepts as valid methods of finding out your Orisha. The first method is going through Ifak. That means you go to the feet of Orumila, Babalaos, and the cer their ceremony is done, they do their divination, and your Orisha is found out who it is. The second valid method is with your godparents, um, if this is their tradition, it's to do it using the Rokum. Some houses, or the, or the Orisha shells, some houses do it with the Lekwa shells, some houses do it with the godfather's ruling Orisha shells. For example, my house, I like to do it with Oshun's shells. I'm a priest of Oshun, and anyone who's going to be my godson, goddaughter, or anything like that, I determine their Orisha by casting Oshun's shells. I do not cast Oshun's shells, I have to hire someone else. It is, it is more widely accepted in the Orisha community that when the person's main Orisha's shells are being consulted, they not manipulate the Orisha, where they would hire an robot, would have hired someone else to manipulate the Orisha's shell so that in that way I wouldn't be able to manipulate the shell somehow to my advantage. You know, so the Orisha would say whatever they need to say through someone else, instead of me putting my own thing. And the third way of finding out your Orisha would be the possession. This can come down in two separate ways. Point A would be that you go somewhere to like a a drumming or something like that and an Orisha is mounted or, or possessing someone else and they come over to you and they tell you or that you yourself go into possession. Now it's very rare for Aleios or non-initiates to go into possession. However, it has happened. If an Aleio goes into possession it is automatically marked so that it's Orisha, obviously because it's Orisha who possesses the person. Now, those are three valid ways. Uh, for the cat parents to lagoon or possession. I do not know of any other way that is admitted in the, in the religion. If there is, please inform me. I don't know. Now, I want to get to talk to you guys about the ways that you do not, I repeat, the ways in which you do not figure out whose Orisha rules your head or who's ruling Orisha or whatever. You do not find someone's Orisha by doing Reiki on them. Okay? No Reiki on people. You don't find out Orisha that way. You do not find out someone's Orisha by doing a tarot card reading. Even if you're using the Orisha's tarot card. There's you know, a set of tarot cards that are called the Orisha's deck. Even if you're using Orisha's deck with Orisha images and whatever, that is not a valid way to figure out someone's ruling not cast runes to figure out someone's Orisha. Runes are a whole completely different mythology, people. They have nothing to do with Ocha. Seriously. Runes? No. Okay? You do not do the whole numerical numerology, adding people's birth date number 3 and 2 and 5 and it's a chum thing. No. You do not do that either. That's not the way it's done. So, oh, I love this one. You do not bring down the moon, Wiccans. You do not bring down the moon and 
the goddess tell someone their holy creation. Um, now, I have had people come to me and tell me that they've had dreams with certain orishas. It is not really accepted as a valid form of saying, oh, this orisha came to me in a dream. Because, for example, I've had, orisha, uh, I've had dreams with the orisha Legua. He's still not my ruling orisha. I've had dreams with, uh, with Asohan. He's not my ruling orisha. And I've had dreams with Lord Shiva, which is Hindu. Not even, you know, dreams is just a way that the orisha can come and visit you. Just like a spirit can come and visit you, but that's not really a valid way of saying this. Is th this orisha visited me, so I think I'm a daughter or a son of so and so. Um, if you guys have any more questions on any of these things, please leave me a comment, send me a message, uh, hit me up on Facebook. I always put my Facebook uh, name, whatever stuff on there. Um, Ask me questions and I'll try and answer. You guys, I never get time of saying to people, I'm always busy, I'm always doing something. I'll get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. But either way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have learned something with this video. And I hope to see you guys soon in another, another video. So, ache, ache, achento.